Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast is your one-stop shop for fantasy football news and advice. Can't decide on who to draft on the first round? Going gaga on how to line up your team. Got you covered. Traditional league, dynasty league, PPR league, IDP league, IDP league, even daily fantasy football league. Join us as we break down all the questions of fantasy football. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. Everybody and welcome to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Marcus Vargas, guys, and here we are with yet another episode. Hopefully, you guys are all doing great, fine, healthy, um, and just nothing negative. I know there's been a lot of chaos ensuing across the nation, so hopefully, um, you know, for some, this can serve as sort of an escape, um, you know, from a lot of the tense things that have been going on. Uh, The nation is that, you know, we're in quite a historic time. It's very, very interesting. To say the least, 2020 has been quite the year. But all right, for today's show, guys, um, well, I guess it's not too different from what we've done before. I'm going to be focusing a lot on the live draft trends um, that ESPN uh, frequently updates for fantasy football. And I want to talk about sleepers at every position that you should definitely, you know, they're definitely worth stashing. um, And sleepers at some other, you know, in positions who maybe you should definitely um, still leave there. To start off, of course, I'm going to be talking about quarterbacks. And, you know, I was actually going to headline this list talking about Matthew Stafford, but uh, recently he has uh, gone up uh, three and a half draft positions. And he's on average he's being drafted at 13, which I really like for him. Um, I think he could be, you know, he might outperform that and end up in the top 10 for sure. Um, but Matthew Stafford is a, is a great pick, uh, QB 13, uh, in my opinion. So if you get him there, I think he will reward you handsomely. I think Matthew Stafford is probably my biggest candidate, um, for a bounce back season. It's not like he had a terrible season. He just missed it all due to health concerns. Right. So, um, I think a lot of people were definitely sleeping on Matthew Stafford, um, you know, fairly recently. So, so I'm glad that everyone's sort of opening their eyes. And realizing that the guy is super talented and a good fantasy football quarterback. Next, though, the actual first sleeper that I'm going to talk about, who's not really a sleeper at all um, as well. He comes right after Matthew Stafford, Daniel Jones of the New York Giants. And now, on average, he's QB 14. um, But for some reason, when, when real drafts roll around, I think that'll be a bit lower. I think a lot of people, they really doubt the New York Giants. Um, you know, they're not that good of a team. They haven't been for quite some time now, but I think with everyone back and healthy, the full cast on offense, Daniel Jones, he's a really big candidate for a breakout season. I talked about him on the breakout show that we had a while back, um, as one of my top candidates for a breakout. And he's a sleeper who definitely will be worth stashing. I wouldn't grab him, you know, uh, he wouldn't be my aim for it to, to be a starter but if you know that's all that's left when you're picking up a quarterback I, I don't know why he would be all that's left when you're picking up a quarterback but if he is um he would be worth I mean he'd be worth you know giving a try he is a bit of a risk but I think he he has a lot of potential uh, to break out next season we have to remember yes he was wildly inconsistent but he had several games over 25 points I think it was like four or five games over 25 points last season, which I know is not a lot, but remember, he didn't start to begin the season. And also, you know, it's his rookie year. You know what I mean? Not everyone can be Patrick Mahomes in their rookie year or Kyler Murray. Um, you know, not saying that, you know, Kyler Murray had the craziest rookie season, but he had a pretty solid uh, rookie season. So, you know, we have to tamper our expectations a bit. I know we've been spoiled with these insane young quarterbacks, Lamar Jackson, Pat Mahomes, you know, they've been just lighting it up. So, um, Daniel Jones, going to be an interesting one. I think he should be drafted for sure. Now, the next quarterback I want to talk about here, and I you know, I have to mention him because I talked about him last episode, Baker Mayfield. Right now, um, he's 
being drafted as the QB 18. And, you know, the guys like Ryan Tannehill, Ben Roethlisberger, and Joe Burrow, who hasn't even stepped on the NFL field yet, uh, are being drafted before him. Baker Mayfield, guys, I really, truly believe he's going to bounce back. And I'm not the biggest fan of Baker Mayfield's, you know, attitude and his personality, but um, I'm still going to cast my vote for him, uh, you know, to bounce back next season. I really think uh, he has the potential. We saw it in his rookie season. I don't really think, you know, that was a fluke. You know, that had, he has the skills, and I think last season was just a mess with the coaching staff, uh, the franchise itself. Uh, there was no real leadership, and they didn't really know what they wanted to do. They didn't have identity, so bringing in the new staff, uh, head coach Kevin Stefanski, I think that's really going to help them out. Uh, bringing in Austin Hooper, you know, sh- helping to shore up the offensive line, I think that's really going to change the identity of this team, and he is for sure going to rank higher than QB20 like he did last season. I think, you know, last season he was for sure a bust. For sure, I think, I think he had 25 total touchdowns and 21 interceptions, guys. He was second most interceptions on the season last year. Just abysmal of a season, um, especially because you know the Cleveland Browns have Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt. They didn't have Hooper last year, but they still had very, very solid offense. Uh, and he could do nothing with it really. It was pretty bad. He also got sacked a ton. Um, Seventh in the league in sacks, so it's just it was not a good year last season. But that sort of felt like more fluky than his rookie season. I think we're gonna see more of his rookie season next season. I think he, you know, he was sort of humbled this year. Hopefully, uh, he knows that they got to get back, and that whole team knows they got to get back and they got to prove themselves because there was Super Bowl hype around that team. You know, not saying that I was on that bandwagon, bandwagon, but there was Super Bowl hype around that team, and I think. Um, Baker Mayfield is going to be a guy definitely worth stashing. If you're a guy who likes to have a backup quarterback, I do this personally. Um, I'm a guy who, you know, I'll draft a quarterback, you know, say fourth or fifth round. I'll take Deshaun Watson if he's there. And later on, I'll, you know, if I see another solid quarterback still on the board, uh, I'll definitely take him. So uh, if you're a guy who takes two quarterbacks, he's definitely a guy worth stashing. Now, the third guy I want to talk about here, Philip Rivers right now is being drafted as QB 24. Guys like Tua Tagovailoa are above him, Kirk Cousins, Drew Locke, Jimmy Garoppolo, and Jared Goff are all above him. Uh, give me Phillip Rivers here. Now, I know Phillip Rivers is a turnover machine, but with the Indianapolis Colts, I think the change of scenery is going to serve him very, very well. He is a solid offense with those two Marlon Mack and Jonathan Taylor at running back with Naeem Hines as his pass catching back. Um, I think they're going to do damage. Uh, T.Y. Hilton, Paris Campbell, Michael Pittman Jr., receiver. Uh, they still have Chester Rogers, Zach Pascal, I'm pretty sure. Those two solid guys. You know, this offense uh, is very well-rounded, and it's just an offense that doesn't get a lot of hype because they're the Colts. Um, but Phillip Rivers, with, it, with, with what arguably is the best offensive line in football, is going to perform better than he did last season. I think at QB 24, he's a steal for sure, and I think he's uh, very well worth it. Now, actually, let me tell me. This is the last quarterback here I have as a sleeper that you should be picking up for sure. I talked about him last episode. Gardner Minshew is at QB twenty six. He is he's going to outperform this position. He ranked as QB nineteen last season. I don't know why you know people are sleeping on him so much. Um, he finally you know it's his team for sure. Uh, he's only going to get better. Uh, twenty one touchdowns and only six interceptions last year, guys. You know he can take care of the football. You know, and while I understand. You know, he wasn't, you know, the biggest fantasy football scorer. Uh, he can definitely give you a consistent 18, 19, 20 points. And I think, you know, as a guy being drafted at uh, QB 26, that's definitely uh, a steal there at value. I don't know why people are sleeping on him so much, but I think he definitely is going to outperform uh, that draft position. Now, one guy I want to talk about, because I think he's getting a lot of hype, but one guy I think who's actually going to be sort of a bust He's getting hype as a sleeper. Teddy Bridgewater. Um, yes, he's a starter in Carolina. Yes, he's a game manager. But guys, uh, if we look at his games last season um, and the games that he started in place of Drew Brees, we got 7.1 points, 16.28, 6.52, 27.26, 13.6, and 19.94. Not the greatest six games. Um, 
not very efficient. I understand they went undefeated during that stretch, right? And so people, you know, he got a lot of hype and he earned a starting job somewhere else for it uh, with a nice contract. But, you know, this is not that good for fantasy football. Only one game over 20 points. And I understand he did have that 27-point explosion against Tampa Bay. But <sighs> when Jameis Winston's throwing all those uh, interceptions, turn the ball over, uh, quarterbacks are usually thriving because they're on the field much more often. Uh, the, you know, the Chicago Bears game, uh, you know, I got to give him credit because that's a solid defense. But, you know, in the other games, you know, he threw zero touchdowns uh, in two of the games that he started. Uh, and I just, I'm not sure about Teddy Bridgewater. He's not a deep ball guy. He takes care of the football, yes. He reminds me of, you know, Alex Smith. Um, I mean, a guy I love. Hey, I love me some Alex Smith uh, as a Kansas City Chiefs fan. But I know that, you know, he's not the, you know, sort of light him up kind of guy. Uh, and the guy who's going to be bomb, bombs away. I mean, he was in his last season, but that's just not in his nature. So I'm not sure um, about Teddy Bridgewater. I would leave him there. Another guy I like right where he is, Jimmy Garoppolo at QB20. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is, I don't, he has to be the most overhyped quarterback I've ever seen. Um, I think he, well, obviously not the most I've ever seen, but I feel like when people speak of him, um, He's spoken of much more highly than he should be because his team is successful and they have a great defense. I don't understand, you know, I get it. He came from, you know, Bill Belichick and the drama with Brady, but I think that gave Jimmy G um, all of the buzz that he has because, I mean, I mean, let's look at his fantasy stats. He has so many games under 15 points. It's 10.44, 9.38, 14.9, 12.12. Six points, 13 points, 10 points, 9 points, 12 points, 10 points, and 11 points. That is 11 games under 15 points. That is awful. Uh, that's not a guy um, I would want as my starter. Uh, and I, I don't see what the hype is around Jimmy G. He's on a run-heavy team. We saw that he can't get it done when it matters most. Leave Jimmy Garoppolo on the boards. I don't think he's a guy worth stashing. And, of course, I could eat my words. Um, but... You know, that's where I'm at right now. That's the, that, I'm sticking to it. Jimmy G is overhyped. I think he's overrated. Uh, just because he came behind Brady and Belichick and has had some success and got a huge contract, you know, that doesn't make him the next Tom Brady. I don't think he is at all. But that's it for quarterbacks for right now, guys. Um, we're going to take a short break, and when we get back, we'll move on to other positions. So stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. We just got done talking about the uh, sleepers and stashers at the quarterback position. So now um, I want to move on uh, to the wide receiver position. Um, well, I probably should have done running back next, but whatever. We're doing wide receiver. <laughs> um and I want to just do the same thing, basically talk about the sleepers. And basically the sleepers of these sort of skill positions is basically I'm thinking um, – Obviously, guys who aren't in the wide receiver one, so in a 10 team, that'd be, you know, the top 10. Um, guys who are more in, like, low-end wide receiver two, uh, you know, wide receiver three thingies that, wide receiver three ranking that I don't believe uh, should be there. Um, so, the first one I want to start with, um, just because this one just pops out to me so much, 
is Calvin Ridley, who right now his average draft position is 20. Um, I think that's pretty, that's just, I think that's too low for him. I know that last season uh, he finished as wide receiver 27. We have to remember he missed three games, right? Um, And also Julio Jones is only getting older. And I think um, with him as the number two wide receiver in Atlanta, um, he's going to slowly become uh, the top dog um, and have a huge, huge season. Um, We have to remember too, the Atlanta Falcons, Pass heavy offense. Uh, if he can stay healthy, and I remember in his rookie season, you know, he put up that huge game early on, and he sort of slowed down after that. But he's been pretty solid um, ever since then. He just has to stay healthy, of course. Um, he has in his first two campaigns, he's caught sixty nine percent of his passes, and he's averaged eight point oh yards per target. And so, if he stays healthy, he has a lot of potential, you know, to become. Not, I don't know about wide receiver one, but definitely higher end wide receiver two. I don't think um, for him being a borderline wide receiver three, I don't think that's the right position for him. So Calvin really, guys, is a sleeper you guys need to pay attention to, of course, so long as he stays healthy. The next sleeper that everyone needs to have their eyes on is Michael Gallup. Right now he's at wide receiver 33. To me, that's pretty ridiculous considering that he had – uh, 66 catch season last year, over a thousand yards, six receiving touchdowns, and I know, you know, six touchdowns. It's not amazing for fantasy football, but I think he's going to take a step forward, uh, considering that Randall Cobb is gone, Jason Witten is gone. They accounted for over 150 targets that now have to get spread between the re- remaining receivers and tight ends. Um, I think Michael Gallup is going to take a big, big step forward next season. He ranked as wide receiver 22 last season, so I have no idea. Um, why he has dropped 11 spots uh, in average draft position. I don't know why people are sleeping on him. Maybe it's because he's a cowboy. Um, that usually tends to throw people off. Um, but he had very solid games last year, several games um, over 20 points, several games over 15 points, and he had an explosion uh, in Week 17 of 32.8 fantasy points. That was an anomaly. It's not really going to happen often, but he had three touchdowns that game, 98 yards on five catches. Michael Gallup is a guy I had on my team. Um, for some reason, I just couldn't get it right. Every time I started him, it was, you know, during his games where he's putting up 10 or under, uh, I didn't, I just caught him on his worst days, but he is a guy that I kept on my team because I knew he was a talented guy. Um, you know, he had some games where, you know, big stinkers, like 1.6, uh, against the LA Rams, 9.3 against the Buffalo Bills. Yes. Inconsistent at times, you know, six points against Philly, but I think, you know, He's going to become, you know, a more established receiver in that offense. He built up a rapport with Dak Prescott, and um, assuming that Dak Prescott's going to play next season, um, I think he's going to do much, much better uh, than wide receiver 33. The next one, guys, Devontae Parker. He's at wide receiver 28. I don't, I don't get what people are thinking here. I mean, okay, he's on the Miami Dolphins, but he just had a breakout season in which he finished as wide receiver 11. Uh... I really don't understand why people wouldn't be giving him more attention. He finished his last three games of the season last uh, year with over 20 points in a row. He had a stinker against the New York Jets, but right before that one, he also had 34.9 points against the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, He scored over 10 points in almost every single game last season, Only and only three of those did he not score 10, and one of them he wasn't playing. Uh, So... Um, I know he played, I think he was getting, he was getting locked down by Stefan Gilmore. Sorry. Um, but that, in those three games, um, were the only games he didn't score at least 10 points. He's a very solid uh, option. He's the top option in Miami Dolphins. I understand the Miami Dolphins, you know, not the best, but when you're the top option on any team and you're getting all the targets, um, you know, that's good for fantasy football. So they have him here as, you know, uh, low end with wide receiver three, um, Definitely going to outperform that. And right next to him, DJ Chark, wide receiver 27. Guys, um, this was the wide receiver 17 last season. Uh, Gardner Minshew's top target for sure, top receiver on the Jags. He's going to put up numbers as well. I think, you know, Gardner Minshew will take a step forward and, you know, consequently, his receivers are going to score more fantasy points. So I think DJ Chark takes a step forward as well. Keep your eyes on these guys. DJ Chark. Um, oh my gosh, Devontae Parker, almost forgot his name there, 
Calvin Ridley. These are guys you definitely need to be paying attention to. Um, also, especially Michael Gallup. If they're going to be passing the ball as much as they did last season in Dallas, uh, for sure, Michael Gallup. But DJ Chark had multiple games over 20 points, two games over 30 points. Um, definitely a guy you need to keep your eye on. Now, he did miss a game, um, but the health concerns aren't, you know, it's not something huge. Uh, it's not something that I would be, you know, necessarily worried about, um, you know, when you compare him to a guy like Will Fuller. Um, you know, who's constantly getting injured, things like that. Now, another guy I want to talk about who I think actually th- might be a bit too high, um, you know, especially when I look at these other sleepers, Juju Smith-Schuster. Um, now, this is just based off of what happened during the season when Antonio Brown was still on the team when Juju Smith-Schuster really shined with Ben Roethlisberger. And I understand he had very subpar quarterback play last season. But right now he's being drafted as wide receiver 12. Um, after a season where he missed several games and just had the a pretty much most abysmal fantasy football season he possibly could have had. Uh, he only scored 113 total fantasy points, finished as wide receiver 65. Very, very bad season last season. Of course, he's going to bounce back, and of course, it's going to get better with Ben Roethlisberger. But when you look at these very, very solid receivers uh, who are being ranked very, very low, it's sort of shocking. I mean... You have a guy like Terry McLaurin, who, of course, he had, I would argue that he had worse quarterback play than Juju Smith-Schuster, um, but was very, very serviceable in, uh, in multiple games, was scoring over 10 and 15 points. Of course, his quarterback play wasn't consistent enough to make him, you know, uh, a consistent wide receiver one or two, but Terry McLaurin's very, very skilled and, you know, uh, with the right quarterback, he's the guy I would take over Juju uh, at this point. You know, we have to remember, I think Juju's a bit overrated at the point. I think he's a solid receiver. I think he's great. I think, you know, people hold him um, in a much higher light right now than he should have been. He hasn't really proved himself just yet, right? So I think um, he is a bit overvalued uh, at wide receiver 12, and I think you have better options there. Options like Allen Robinson. Listen, I know uh, he has Mitchell Trubisky, but he's the top target there. Uh, You know, better options like Keenan Allen, who actually is a very, very solid receiver, a very slept-on wide receiver, you know. So I'm not sure about Juju Smith-Schuster as of yet. He's a guy who I think is a bit too high. Now, um, a lot of people have talked about Tyler Boyd uh, being one of those sleepers who's going to, you know, have a great season. He was pretty good last season, but I'm just not in on the on the whole Tyler Boyd thing. I think he's right where he belongs at wide receiver 32. I understand he ranked 18th last season. I understand, but that feels a little bit fluky to me. Um, he had one of the lower catch rates uh, of the season last season amongst the you know, um, top targets uh, in the NFL. And I just, you know, I have to see what happens with Joe Burrow right now. I don't want to... I don't want to go all in on Tyler Boyd yet or any of those receivers because they have a plethora of receivers right now. A.J. Green, Tyler Boyd, uh, John Ross. Uh, you know, those are pretty significant targets. And you know, they, they drafted T. Higgins. So I'm not quite sure on Tyler Boyd. Um, you know, I know for sure you probably read or hear other places that Tyler Boyd should be a guy, you're, you know, sleeper guy you're, you should be picking up. But not completely sold on him. So right now those other guys I was talking about you should definitely pay attention to. DJ Chark. Devontae Parker, Michael Gallup, uh, certainly guys uh, you want to be paying attention to. And one I want to add to this list, uh, just because I think it's going to be very, very interesting, Marquise Brown. Right now his average draft position is wide receiver 36. Um, You know, I understand those first two games last season, they were playing against bum defenses, right? But he's shown that he can be absolutely explosive. And if Lamar Jackson is working on the deep ball, as John Harbaugh suggests he is, and they're going to be passing more, this guy with, you know, that, you know, burner speed, I think it's going to be very, very interesting. He didn't have the best fantasy football season last season. He was also dealing with injury, uh, wasn't fully healthy all year. I think, you know, give him a year, let him get fully healthy, and it could be something special. Now, he had a 10.1% touchdown rate, uh, which is probably not going to be sustainable. He's probably not going to be that good. Um You know, considering, you know, he didn't have that many touches, but so uh, many touchdowns. I mean, I I think he only, he went over five receptions in a game once. Um, And I think he played, what, 14 games? So, um, you know, that kind of production is pretty insane. But I think he's going to become a more more reliable target um, if Lamar Jackson can get his act together and work on that deep ball. So pay attention to Marquise Brown as well. I'm not as high on him as I am on these other guys, but definitely an interesting guy to possibly stash. 
All right. With that, guys, we're going to go into our break and, of course, move on to the next position, which will be running back. So stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back after this break. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G- smcpodcast.com for more info. guys welcome back as we continue our list of sleepers we move on to the running back position okay well i'm just gonna get right into it and first and foremost i want to start off this list by talking about someone who is being drafted a bit too high uh, at least when i compare him to others at number eight right now sits Kenyon drake now i like Kenyon drake and i think he's gonna have a great season however when I look at someone like Austin Eckler, when I look at someone like Nick Chubb, right now I feel that they are going to have better seasons uh, than Kenyon Drake, and I don't think he should be drafted above them. Also, you know, guys like Leonard Fournette. Of course, Leonard Fournette, drama with his team. You know, I think he should be closer. Leonard Fournette's at number 13. I think Kenyon Drake should be closer to there uh, than number 8. Austin Eckler, to me, is rated a bit too... He's he not rated, sorry. He's being drafted a bit too low at number 10 here. When you compare him to a guy like Aaron Jones, um, Kenyon Drake. Aaron Jones is at number 7 here, but Aaron Jones' touchdown rate... He's not going to score that many touchdowns next season. Um, you know, I, what was I think he had... Had to be... Was it 16? Maybe 19? 19 touchdowns, was it? 19 touchdowns, I think, off the top of my head. I really don't think... Um, he's going to have that many touchdowns again. He ranked as fantasy football's number two back. Now, you know, when you consider that, of course, this is a big drop at he's being averaged drafted at number seven as running back seven. Um, but for running back eight for Kenyon Drake, I'm not sure. I think, um, Austin Eckler, uh, should be above him in that regard. Nick Chubb is right behind him at running back nine. Um, but, but yeah, I don't know. Kenyon Drake is a bit too high. But now to actually talk about <laughs> some sleepers, guys. Right now, uh, at the running back two position, and of course I'm going off of a 10-team league because I constantly do 10-team leagues. I think they're better than 12. Uh, but of course everyone has their own opinion. Miles Sanders, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire at 15 and 16. These are two guys that if you can get them at that RB2 uh, spot as running back 15 and 16, these are going to be steals. Absolute steals. I like Clyde Edwards Hilaire and Miles Sanders over um, a guy like Josh Jacobs, a guy like Leonard Fournette, um, for sure. Miles Sanders and, you know, Clyde Edwards Hilaire are going to be um, big receiving threats. And, you know, Josh Jacobs wasn't a huge receiving threat. Um, you know, he never got over three receptions in any of his games last season. Uh, three was the most. He went several games without any receptions, went several games with just one reception. Um, and even in some of those games, look, three receptions, 12 yards, three receptions, 10 yards. You know, so he's not a big threat in the passing game. And, you know, for fantasy football, if you're playing PPR, receptions are everything. Um, different story, of course, if you're playing standard. Um, but right now I'm going off of the PPR format. Uh, or half PPR, it doesn't matter. You know, you're still getting points for those receptions. Clyde Edwards Hilaire is running back 16. He's he's going to outperform that. Uh, I'm making the big call right now that uh, I've said it many times. He's going to take the starting job in Kansas City, just how we saw Kareem Hunt do it. 
he's going to explode onto the scene and be a prolific, uh, a big part of that prolific offense. Miles Sanders, same sort of deal. Uh, people have talked about Boston Scott because he had that big, you know, he had an explosion late in the season. Um, but Miles Sanders is the guy here, I think. I think that's why they got rid of Jordan Howard. Um, if they weren't confident in Miles Sanders, um, you know, I'm not sure uh, you'd let Jordan Howard go uh, to run with Boston Scott. So, Miles Sanders, keep an eye on him, guys. He was lighting it up towards the end of the season. Uh, and I think, you know, he finished as a running back 15 um, last season, he wasn't even a starter, so I think he takes a step forward and outperforms his average draft position. So keep your eyes for sure on Miles Sanders and Clyde Edwards Hilaire. They're being drafted similarly next to each other, and I think they're definitely going to outperform people um, like Melvin Gordon, Le'Veon Bell, David Johnson, who are there ranked above. Now, someone who I believe is ranked a bit too low, Jonathan Taylor. Now, Jonathan Taylor right now is sitting at running back 28. And the reason why, you know, I'm just a bit confused is because, so Marlon Mack is average, on average, he's being drafted as the running back 34. If Jonathan Taylor is, is, if Marlon Mack's not being drafted before Jonathan Taylor, why isn't Jonathan Taylor much higher? You know, if Jonathan Taylor is going to be the starter, and, you know, the hype around him is real and he's going to be explosive and as productive as he was at Wisconsin. Now, he needs to be much higher uh, than running back 28. I think he'll definitely outperform guys like David Montgomery, outperform guys like Mark Ingram. Uh, for sure, he's going to outperform a guy um, like Melvin Gordon, who's going to be in a timeshare uh, with Philip Lindsay. Uh, I, I really don't think that, you know, Marlon Mack, while as a solid running back, isn't as established there um, as, as some people might think. He did struggle with some injury issues, uh, and I think if Jonathan Taylor can come in, stay healthy, and, and live up to that hype, he for sure uh, is going to be a solid pickup. Now, probably one of my, my favorite sleeper here, guys, DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift is at running back 26 right now, and I think that he's going to become the bell cow back uh, for Detroit. Carrion Johnson has had a lot of health issues, and I think... The Detroit Lions are going to become, you know, one of those sort of, you know, a team that's going to have a, uh, a big threat at running back. They haven't had it in such a long time. Uh, their running back group last season was just terrible. Carrion Johnson missed so many games. Uh, and they couldn't find a guy to sort of come in and fill in that hole. I think DeAndre Swift is the guy. And at, run and at running back 26, guys, that's insane value. I think he becomes the top back in Detroit. Um, definitely going to be worth it. Another interesting sleeper pick, guys, I think he's worth stashing, is Cam Akers of the L.A. Rams. Uh, of course, he's competing with Daryl Henderson, but the L.A. Rams don't really have, you know, that guy right now. Um, I think, you know, of course, he's going to, you know, like I said, it's going to be running back by committee, and that's not, you know, the greatest for fantasy football. But I don't think Malcolm Brown uh, is that big of a threat. Uh, but I think, you know, if he can work on being a pass catcher or just explode onto the scene as a, as a you know, uh, every down back, he's certainly worth his uh, draft position here. And I think he has the potential to do that. Now, it is a little bit of a risk because, like I said, he's not, you know, he's not going to be involved a ton in the passing game. But I think he'll be an interesting guy to stash uh, and to see what happens with the L.A. Rams. They want a big name. They want a guy who, you know, has star power. Like, they, it's just how they are. You know, they didn't need to go out there and get Jalen Ramsey last season, but they did. You know, they like the star power. They like the big names. Um, Cam Akers is a name. You know, Malcolm Brown right now is not a name. And I think, um, you know, with a team being in L.A., uh, they want a team full of stars. Whether, you know, you agree or not, uh, there's something strange going on <laughs> in L.A. Uh, because they feel like they constantly have to get the biggest names on the free agent market. And look what it's done uh, to their team. Okay. One more sleeper that I do want to talk about, Le'Veon Bell, New York Jets. And I know, man, he let a lot of people down last season. I wasn't one of them. I didn't draft him, but I think he's a huge candidate for a bounce-back season. Um, I've talked about it already. The Jets in the draft worked to shore up the offensive line. Um, no, I don't think he's an RB1 as of right now, but he has that potential. His average draft position, I think, right now is 19. Um he ranked as running back 16 last season. I think he's going to be at least uh, in the top 15 of running backs um, with the potential 
uh, to, you know, sort of crack that uh, top 10. I think, uh, you know, he's definitely going to have top 10 finishes during the season, right? So if he can be, your, you know, a steady RB2 for you uh, and have some explosive games, I think that's definitely worth it. I understand now he's 28. Um, you know, he still has, you know, some sort of, you know, he hasn't played in a full 16 game season for a while. Uh, he's on a bad offense. Um, but I think that, you know, he has something to prove. Um, that first season with the New York Jets really just made him look silly after that, you know, long holdout saying, uh, you know, I don't want to play for this much and whatever, whatever. Um, he's a guy I think you should keep your eye on. He has a lot to prove and he was stellar when he was in Pittsburgh. So I think he can return to that form. He can return to that form sooner than people think. And he has to. He doesn't have much time left. You know, 28 at running back, you know, you start dipping in production. You know, once you get to 30, teams basically just think you're 87 years old. So um, his time's running out. He knows that, and he knows he has to prove himself, um, not only to the Jets, but to to a lot of people out there who he, uh, you know, sort of, you know, Turn the turn turn the other what what is it turn the other cheek oh, he didn't turn the other cheek to them but he just turned his back on I should be saying <laughs> uh, so uh, definitely definitely interesting so just to recap Austin Eckler definitely I think should be I like him in the top ten for running backs I think he should be above guys like Kenyon Drake um, Miles Sanders Clyde Edward Hilaire De- Clyde Edwards Hilaire definitely gonna outperform their draft positions of fifteen and sixteen respectively. Le'Veon Bell's a sleeper you definitely, definitely need to keep your eye on. DeAndre Swift as well. Jonathan Taylor and Cam Akers. So keep your eyes on those guys. I really don't think, you know, there's guys on here at average rep position of 30. Ronald Jones. Carrion Johnson's at 31. You know, Tariq Cohen's at 33. Those guys are fine right where they are. Of course, you know, they might go up or back a you know position or two here, but I think uh, around where they are is where they fit. One guy, though, I will say just before we get into our break here, Mark Ingram shouldn't be ranked above anyone who's starting because he is on such a run-heavy team with Lamar Jackson and other running backs that take carries. His touchdown rate is absolutely unsustainable. I don't think he's going to be that good of a fantasy running back next season. Okay, guys, and with that, we'll go into our break, and when we get back, we just continue the list. So stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back, welcome back as always to the next segment. We move on to the tight end position, guys. Uh, of course, this is a position. This is a position, you know, you know, not too deep of a position. You know, position people were um, talking about changing just to flex, uh, ha- or have talked about, you know, thinking about taking away the tight end position because it's so shallow. But uh, of course, we're going to cover it as well because. We have to. It's an important piece of a winning team. You know, if you have one of these solid tight ends in your league, um, that can take you very, very far. I remember a few years back, I I think it was during this Eagles Super Bowl run. Yeah, I had Zach Ertz and George Kittle on my team, and I would run them, one at tight end and one at flex. And that served me very, very well. So tight ends can definitely uh, change the game. People don't appreciate them enough uh, in fantasy football. So let's talk about them. First thing I want to note, these average draft positions I'm liking so far. I mean, the top five, we got Travis Kelsey, George Kittle at two, Zach Ertz at three, Mark Andrews at four, Darren Waller at five. This one here, though, Gronkowski at six. Okay. 
that's a bit too high for my liking. And I understand, you know, tight end is a very shallow position, as I've said. Uh, but, you know, we have to consider the reasons why Rob Gronkowski left the game for a bit. You know, his health is a major, major concern. And he's only gotten older. You know, if I look at a guy, I think, you know, Hunter Henry, Evan Ingram right now. Those are guys that right now I think I could rely on more than Rob Gronkowski. Rob Gronkowski is a bit too high for my liking. People are drafting him, I think, just because of the hype surrounding Tampa Bay. Um, so I don't know if you should be drafting Rob Gronkowski at tight end six. Um, but to each their own, I get it, the hype, the bandwagon. That offense is going to be explosive, but I think, you know, with those receivers, um, I think he's sort of taking a back seat here. He's not going to be the Rob Gronkowski of the New England Patriots. Okay, the sleeper, the first sleepers I want to talk about, both are in the NFC East, guys. Dallas Goddard and Blake Jarwin. Dallas Goddard is tight end 19 right now. Blake Jarwin tight end 20. Okay, I'll remind everyone, Dallas Goddard, as a backup tight end for the Philadelphia Eagles last season, finished as tight end 10. Why on earth he is at, you know, being drafted as tight end 19 right now, I do not know. Um, I think, you know, with the more time that goes on, guys, Dallas Goddard is going to be more and more featured in this offense. So he definitely should be drafted much higher than tight end 19. And I understand the reasoning. You know, all these other guys uh, are starters. But in Philly, they throw the tight ends a ton. Uh, and there's a lot of touchdowns where you see the ball go up and you go, oh, Zach Gertz for the, oh, wait, that's Dallas Goddard. You know, he had five touchdowns last season. Um, and I figure he'll have five or more next season. And again, um, unfortunately, that takes some value off of Zach Ertz, right? Uh, so, you know, Zach Ertz only had six touchdowns. So if you think about that, the backup only had one less touchdown. Now, of course, he's getting way less receptions and way uh, less yards, but he's going to grow, become, you know, the heir apparent. You know, he is the heir apparent, so he'll he'll be inheriting, you know, the torch when Zach Ertz is, you know, too old and can't do it anymore. So definitely keep your eye on uh, Dallas Goddard. Blake Jarwin here, guys. He's going to outperform this uh, tight end 20 position. Uh, Dak Prescott has talked about him as one of the top athletes on the team. I think having Jason Witten on the team severely limited him and his growth and his potential. Um, to me, they should have stuck with Blake Jarwin here. Um, I think he's a fine tight end. Of course, we, have, we haven't seen much. Um, but, you know, he's had flashes. Uh, his highest scoring game was only 11 points last season. But you have to remember, one, he's at the tight end position. Uh, and two... He was a backup, and, you know, and you know, of course, we're not making any excuses. Dallas Goddard, um, you know, tight end ten as a backup, but he was more involved in that offense than Blake Jarwin was uh, in Dallas's offense. And I think now that he's the top guy, he signed his little extension. Uh, they've shown that they want to run with him. Uh, I think you know he's going to put up some some good numbers. So definitely keep an eye on those two. One more here that I definitely want to talk about: Hayden Hurst. He's at tight end 15 right now and I think he has potential um to sort of be you know tight end 12 and above sort of that you know that early tight end two uh instead of middle tight end two you know Jared Cook right now is being drafted as tight end 10 last season he ranked as tight end seven but I think he's going to see a big fall off um he is only getting older uh and honestly I just don't see him keeping it up I see some of these younger guys who are getting opportunities to be the top dog on their team uh, stepping up. You know, Mike Gesicki, uh, TJ Hawkinson, Hayden Hurst. I see these guys sort of outperforming Jared Cook. And even though he has Drew Brees and they're in a prolific offense, um, I think these other guys, you know, Noah Fant, uh, they have potential uh, to outperform a guy like Jared Cook. Of course, you know, with the tight end position, there's not many here. So, you know, there's not many sleepers to talk about. But one thing I do uh, want to talk about, Taysom Hill... Um, is eligible uh, for tight end. Now, I don't know <laughs> how I feel about this, just because he really didn't score that many fantasy football points, you know, in general. But when you think about it, uh, last season he scored 102 fantasy football points. Eric Ebron last season scored 86, just to give you comparison. Um. That's clear. Let's see another tight end. Mike Isicki with 136. You know, not that many more points than a guy um, who's a sort of Swiss army knife. So 
Taysom Hill could be a very, very interesting play uh, at the tight end position. So, you know, if, you know, as long as, you know, Sean Payton doesn't make him a starting QB at any point, um, definitely keep him on your radar. I think uh, it's very, very interesting um, because if he gets some rushing touchdowns, you know, that's big points. Uh, if he throws some touchdowns, rushes the ball, gets a bunch of your 40 yard rush, let's say just pops one off for a touchdown. That's 10 points automatically there. Uh, not to mention other things that he can do uh, with the team, throwing the football, catching the ball. Uh, I think they're going to inv- involve him more next season. Um, and it's going to be very, very interesting. If you end up somehow with no tight end or your tight end gets injured, um, and there's really not a bunch of selections and you want to shake up the game, Keep your eyes on Taysom Hill. Who knows? He he might you know he might do you some justice. Um, but <laughs> other than that, guys, it's you know with the tight end position, you guys know how this goes. It is hard um, to sort of analyze these guys because they just don't score many uh, fantasy football points once you leave that tight end one territory. You know it really really drops off. But one guy I do want to talk about. TJ Hawkinson, I expect to sort of um, burst onto the scene next season. Uh, you know, he had a lot of hype around him. Um, I'm pretty sure he didn't. He did not play all 16 games last season, if I remember correctly. And I think, um, you know, we didn't really get to see, you know, the full scope. He didn't have Matt Stafford with him. And I understand that first game against Arizona was, a, you know, sort of fluky. He had 25 points. Uh, we found, you know, we later find out Arizona would be, I think, the worst defense against tight ends. Uh, but I think he shows a lot of potential. Um, of course, he wasn't as consistent as could be. But with subpar quarterback play, uh, constantly getting, you know, six points and above hey, for a tight end is not too bad. And, of course, as a rookie, we don't expect tight ends uh, to light it up. So keep your eyes on TJ Hawkinson, guys. Um, I think he'll do pretty well. And just to add one more, Hayden Hurst at tight end 15. Um, like I said, he's taking that spot for Austin Hooper. Austin Hooper, of course, as you all know, had a great fantasy football position. I mean, great fantasy football season last year at the tight end position. You know, I think right now, of course, he's going to be a tight end too, but he has potential to break out uh, and be in that tight end one territory. So keep your eyes on Hayden Hurst. I think that's going to be a very, very interesting one to watch. But all right, guys, with that, we'll go into our break and we'll talk defenses next next segment because why not? You know, people really don't show defenses any love. So (laughs) stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back after the break. Are you looking to get your college football fixed? Looking to get the latest news on your favorite school's team? The GSMC College Football Podcast is your ticket to all things college football. Join us as we talk college football from the national championship, the college rivalries, the bowl game, to the Heisman Trophy, to which conference is the best. We've got you covered for the Big Ten, SEC, Big 12, the Pac-12, ACC, and everything in between. Download the GSMC College Football Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Special team live draft trends, and I gotta say, uh, just upon opening this list, it's pretty surprising. So I'm not even gonna. I'll talk about sleepers and stuff, but I just want to give my initial reactions, my knee jerk reactions to this list. The Bills, on average, are the top defense being drafted right now in fantasy football. Whoa, uh, definitely not. You know, a defense. Of course, you know I know they've been a solid defense and they're a defensive team, but they're not a defense that I have. Uh, in my top five, uh, you know, normally when I talk about my top five, I talk about the Steelers. Um, I talk about the Ravens. I've talked about the 49ers, but I think they're going to dip out. Um, 
you know, I even talked about the Colts being a sleeper as one of the top defenses, but I haven't talked much about the Bills. And of course, now, you know, I'm sort of recognizing my mistake because last season they, they were uh, fantasy's number six defense and they've always been a, they've been a solid defense. You know, they gave Lamar a very, very uh, good run for his money during the regular season uh, in the Baltimore Ravens. But, oh, excuse me, I honestly do not believe uh, that these guys are going to be the top defense next season. They are going to be one of the top defenses. I, I will agree to that. But number one is a bit high, <laughs> in my opinion. I think um, a team like the Steelers or the Ravens are going to have that top position. And just to remind everyone, um, of course, the top defense last season uh, was the New England Patriots. The number two defense was the Pittsburgh Steelers. So, um, you know, they are consistently a good defense. Uh, they get a ton of pressure consistently, you know, a sack leading team. I think the Steelers end up being number one here. I think the Bills are rated a bit too high and the 49ers as well. The 49ers finished last season uh, as fantasy's number three defense slash special teams. But I think they're going to see a very significant fall off. Um, and I think uh, last season was sort of fluky, you know, you know, they still have Nick Bosa. They still have Richard Sherman. They still have Jimmy Ward. Um, but, you know, Richard Sherman's getting older. Um, they lost, oh my gosh, was it DeForest Buckner? DeForest Buckner, sorry. Um, and, you know, it's just, I don't know if they're going to be doing the same. Uh, of course, I don't think their offense is going to be as stellar as it was last season, too. And that also attributes to your defense. You know, if your offense isn't that good, sometimes it really affects the defense. So, um, Bills and 49ers at 1-2 and two here uh, is sort of surprising. One team I'm going to say is rated too high here is the Patriots at number 5. I understand, you know, the recency bias of the defense and special teams. Um, but I really think since that offense, I think the offense is going to struggle. And I think that's going to uh, weigh on the defense as well. Okay, guys, I want to talk about some sleepers. I have to talk about my Kansas City Chiefs. My Kansas City Chiefs, on average, are being drafted as the 14th defense, so basically they're not being drafted because nobody's drafting two defenses. Um, I think they deserve a spot to be drafted. I'm going to be honest here, guys. They finished as number 11 uh, last season, and I think a lot of people uh, ignore them because of how bad their run defense has been. They they just had that, you know, sort of infamous, you know, um, that notoriety of being a bad defense, but... You know, Next Gen says we have one of the top defenders on our team in Tyron Matthew. We have Chris Jones, uh, you know, comparable to Aaron Donald and how effective he can be and how quick he gets off the line. Um, you know, so uh, our defense is pretty solid with the addition of Willie Gay. Our linebackers are our weak point. I will say that. But with the addition of Willie Gay, you know, he should bolster the defense. Uh, with another year with Steve Spagnuolo, the defense being more comfortable. Uh, the only real uh, starter we lost was Kendall Fuller who wasn't the, you know, he wasn't the biggest contributor. So um, I think we'll be pretty solid next season. If we can continue with, the, you know, Frank Clark and Chris Jones on that line getting a lot of pressure. Derek Nottie has been a defensive tackle who stepped up a bunch. Um, I think we can be pretty solid next season. I think um, they're definitely worth a shot. I'm not saying, you know, you should be drafting this the, the Chiefs um, top five or anything like that. But if you take them as a 10th defense, I, you know, I can see that, you know, in a 10-team league, they're the last defense taken. In a 12-team league, maybe 12th or 11th. Um, I like them there. I will say this, though. The Broncos at number 7. I don't know how to feel about that. Last season, the Broncos finished as fantasy's number 20 uh, fantasy defense. And to have them moved up, being drafted 13 spots ahead of that uh, is pretty insane. I understand... Uh, you know, they added A.J. Bouye. They've had other several additions. Jarrell Casey. Um, I understand that. But, again, it's one of those teams where Von Miller's only getting older, guys. And we can only talk about him uh, for so much longer. He's been an outstanding player, of course. He's going to go into the Hall of Fame, I believe. Uh, but right now, he's only getting older. Right? And so, and I, and I know that, um, oh, I'm blanking on this. Now, Chris Harris Jr. is getting older as well. But he his talent is undeniable. And they lost him. Um, so... Uh, we do have to remember that. Of course, they still have Justin Simmons, who's phenomenal. Um, but uh, I really don't know about number seven. Uh, this list really hasn't been much about sleepers, has it? <laughs> it's just been me talking about who's been way uh, overvalued. Uh, but, it, you know, it is kind of tough with defenses, right? And also, you have to like we have to remember sometimes, you know, special teams, punt returns, getting blocks. Um, that gives you points uh, for your fantasy defense as well. And that's another reason I put the Chiefs a bit higher. We have Tyreek Hill and Miko Hardman, 
very, very explosive returners uh, who can take one to the house at any time. So uh, definitely something to keep an eye on. I would at least say, um, I guess for a sleeper here, because, you know, they're a team uh, that's not getting drafted uh, in any uh, 10 team leagues would be the Minnesota Vikings. Right now, they're average, on average, they're being drafted at number 12. And last season, they finished position rank number five. Um, you know, Minnesota, while, you know, Xavier Rhodes has really fallen off. Um, and I think, you know, it's tough because they were do- they were very, very dominant uh, in recent years. And I think uh, with Xavier Rhodes falling off uh, and their secondary not being the most proven group, uh, they do have Harrison Smith and Anthony Harris with the safety positions locked down. They're great. Eric Kendricks at linebacker, you know, Daniil Hunter with the pass rush. I think uh, the biggest concern for them, I guess, you know, with the cornerbacks being so weak, um, you know, that's going to that's gonna cause concern. But I think they have the ability to outperform number 12. I think they at least will be a top 10 defense. Um, you know, for me to sit here and say that I truly believe that, you know, uh, a team like the Jets – is going to perform better than them. I don't know if I can believe that a team like the uh, Chicago Bears, uh, you know, being drafted at the number nine spot, uh, defense number nine. I don't know if I agree with that, you know, because the the Chicago defense has really fallen off since losing Adrian Amos, um, you know, uh, a few years ago. Um, and I understand, you know, they have they got they just got Robert Quinn, uh, you know, they got Akeem Hicks. Uh, they're a very solid team. Eddie Jackson, Khalil Mack, you know, Kyle Fuller's an outstanding cornerback, and he's still on the team. But look at what they did last season with that horrible offense. Sometimes your offense really doesn't allow you to perform and flourish as a defense, and I think that's going to weigh them down. Uh, unless they have that insane, you know, that in, like in another insane year when Khalil Mack first arrived in Chicago, um, I don't see them even as a top 10 fantasy football defense. So you guys, you know, you have to be careful uh, when drafting these defenses. You really got to... You got to go with what's been consistent overall, uh, rather than going with teams that have had sort of that, you know, one year wonder type of thing. Um, you know, the Ravens always have solid defenses. The Steelers always have solid defenses. The Bills, I like them as a pick. You know what? Okay, I think one is a little too high. I think I'd take a different team, but, um, you know, I see the reasoning. They play the Jets twice a year. They're going to play the Pats twice a year. They're going to play the Dolphins twice a year. Teams that no one really believes in. So I understand the reasoning for people taking them at number one. You know, these are teams who have that solid defenses, and that's why you have a team like the Broncos uh, being drafted number seven. Um, but just, just, just be careful, guys, because defenses can also make or break a season. Um, I know in all the leagues that I was in, uh, the person who had the Patriots defense constantly was winning games because they were putting up so much point, so many points at the defense position, and sometimes outscoring uh, a ton of skill players and you know guys at RB one, wide receiver one. So. Just keep an eye on defenses. You have to be smart about it. Um, And also, just because a team, high-powered offense, that doesn't necessarily mean high, uh, you know, super tough defense or a great defense. Sometimes having a great offense who scores a lot can actually hamper your defense. Um, Me being a Chiefs fan, I know that very well. You score fast, your defense constantly on the field. Your defense is constantly on the field. Uh, They wear out. It makes it harder for them uh, to hold teams to low amounts of points. But... With that, guys, we're going to end this, this segment. Um, defense is one of those things that's it's very hard to analyze. You know, you can't, you know, you, you just don't know when a guy's going to pop off a, a punt return, a kick return, when they're going to block. And those are key things. Um, one thing I will say, though, look for teams that generate a lot of pressure. One thing that holds the Ravens back is that they don't generate a ton of pressure. Teams that get sacks on a consistent basis uh, are solid for fantasy football because sacks, uh, you know, it helps everyone. Pressure helps the secondary. It gets you points, and it keeps teams from scoring as well. Uh, You know, teams can have lockdown corners but get gashed by the run, right? You know, a team can generate um, pressure and at least help their secondary, and I think that has more of a lasting effect. Um, A team can also have a great run defense um, but get torched. Um, which makes it easier for teams to put up a bunch of points and yards, which lowers your defensive points. Uh, so that's why I like teams like the Steelers, uh, you know, uh, because they generate a bunch of pressure uh, and can keep points off the board while getting a strip sack here and there, you know, and so on and so forth. All right, guys, with that, we'll cut it here and we'll get into our last segment. So stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back. 
This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA, it's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. guys welcome to the last segment of today's episode of the gsmc fantasy football podcast and you know i did uh, i did mention earlier today or in the beginning of the episode that you know i hope that this could serve as an escape uh, for a lot of people um you know from a lot of the you know madness that has been going on outside uh, you know whether you support it whether you don't support it um you know you know sometimes just you know letting loose sitting down and relaxing uh, can really help with stress uh, things of that nature, and I, I would say that I, I'm just going to say it upright. I hope that you can support the what's going on outside. Of course, not every aspect of it, maybe, but at least um, what uh, people are hoping to achieve. So, with this last segment here, guys, I actually want to turn the focus away uh, from fantasy football for a second, and I want to just talk about the situation in general um, because it's something that's very, very important and it needs to be spoken about. And I don't, you know, there are a lot of people who should be speaking about it who aren't. A lot of companies who, and, and, and you know, people of power who should be taking the stance um, and supporting the movement who are not. And I just want to speak on it. Um, for one, I just want to give my thoughts, uh, you know, on the NFL just because, you know, uh, this is what Colin Kaepernick was kneeling for. Um this is why Colin Kaepernick lost his job. Uh, and right now it's a weird time because, you know, the NFL is really looking silly right now. You know, uh, I supported Colin Kaepernick. You know, I'm not, I don't want to get into, uh, you know, I'm not a person who would like to get political very often, but this is not politics. Uh, this is human rights. This is, um, human nature. This is something that is much, much bigger than political opinion. Uh, being a Republican or being a Democrat, um, this is much more than that. This is about being human, uh, loving one another, um, and it's just fundamental uh, for living a happy and equal life, right? So this is not just someone taking a political stance. This is me talking about something that has to do with us as human beings uh, living together, um, you know, equally. But anyway, uh, the NFL made a post on Twitter. I did mention in last episode you know, expressing their condolences, their grief, support, whatever. But where was this when Colin Kaepernick was kneeling? You know, uh, I'm highly disappointed in the NFL. Um, they need to do more. Uh, and, you know, Colin Kaepernick lost his job and his livelihood uh, because the NFL couldn't care less uh, about some guy kneeling uh, protest that what the, you know they tried to you know the narrative was skewed and it became about anti America and anti the flag and anti the anthem but that's not what it was about right uh, it was about much more he said it plenty of times it was about uh, the unjust treatment of African Americans and people of color in this nation he was using his platform and his voice to protest peacefully not doing anything and and he you know paid the price for it um, now the NFL comes out and you have players. Um, criticizing the NFL. Uh, just recently, Eric Kendricks, Anthony Barr, uh, members of the, of the Minnesota Vikings players, they're denouncing the NFL, and they're coming at them pretty heavily. Um, you know, Eric Kendricks says, your statement said nothing. Your league is built on black athletes. Vague answers do nothing. Let the players know what you're actually doing. And we know what silence means. And then he posts a picture of the NFL logo, but instead of saying NFL, it says, we want answers. Um, so, you know, this is something I like it. Um, I like that teams are opening dialogues. Um, there were reports that, uh, oh, how am I blanking on his name? Howie Roseman and Doug Peterson had a, had a meeting with their team that was very powerful and informative. Um, and, and I like that this is going on. I wish it could have happened sooner. I wish, you know, tragedy didn't have to happen to spark these sorts of things, but 
you know, all I can say now is that I'm glad that these things are happening in response. It is much, much better than nothing. It's much, much better than, you know, us going back to normal. Um, you know, we've seen this happen plenty, plenty of times when there were school shootings. I mean, there constantly are these crazy acts of violence, you know, it would just become the normal, right? It became something we expected. And whenever tragedy strikes, we just go, oh, yet again, uh, oh, what's new? And I'm glad that right now we are at a pivotal point in American history uh, and hopefully some change comes out of this. Um, I like that players are coming together. Um, I like that you're seeing white players speak out on this because um, as Richard Sherman, Richard Sherman mentioned, you know, black players and people have been saying this for how long? You know, it, 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 it is just, just the unfortunate truth that when a white person says these things and shows the support, it does, you know, it hits different, as people would say, right? It, it really does strike a different chord um, when you see, you know, uh, when white people can see, you know, uh, their white idols or, uh, you know, their role models speak up uh, for equality. It does um, sort of give it a different perspective. So it's nice to see, uh, hopefully, um, you know, we can see more of this. And, and with the Minnesota Vikings, you know, it hits them more because that's where uh, everything started. So hopefully, you know, the NFL can take more actions to prove that they're actually doing something. It's very easy to make a post. It is. Um, you know, they just tell someone, you know, hey, write this, post this at this time. That's very easy. But to show, um, you know, your actions, to do something, to go out and do something that might make you uncomfortable, uh, to go out and risk, you know, losing money over this is what uh, players want to see. Players want to see true change. And now people do. Everyone around the world does. And I think with a, you know, a sport so dominated um, uh, by black athletes and people of color, you know, they want to see themselves treated equally. They want to see themselves um, valued and important and they want to feel important. So um, this is something it's very unfortunate. Uh, like I said, I'll say it plenty of times. I wish it you know, didn't have to come to someone losing their life uh, to start this sort of movement. But the NFL needs to be held accountable for what little uh, it has done um, to sort of uh, push the narrative the other way and help people of color feel equal in this country. And I hope uh, with such a huge platform and so many people of color working for them and in their uh, organization that they can, um, you know, do things to shape locker rooms, to shape um, and shape the communities around their teams to be better. So, of course, we'll see in the coming days what the NFL does, if they're doing anything. Uh, I hope they do more than just making a post about it because, yes, you show solidarity with the movement and, you you know, you're supporting. But um, when you have that much money and you can do so much more to help, it's going to look very badly if all you do is post on social media. We all can post on social media. Anyone with a phone can do it, but not everyone has billions of dollars. Not everyone's this super powerhouse of a company. You know what I mean? No, so they need to do more. And, and that's the simple fact of it. So um, I urge you um, to just do something. You know, if it's better than nothing. And, and you know, uh, I think everyone should be uh, supporting this movement. And however you feel, you know, um, you know, set aside what you feel. I know there's a lot of bad media attention um, to those who have made this, you know, who riot, who loot. But that's not the heart of the movement. You know, so the focus has to be on what everyone is trying to change, uh, what everyone wants to make better. The heart of the movement is fighting for equality. Um, you know, most of the organizers are not violent people. Most of the organizers do not go out there with the intentions to loot. A lot of people looting... Um, may not even be out there to support the movement, but taking advantage of it uh, to go loot. So just uh, know that this movement at its core uh, is for equality and peace and love. And a lot of protesters, most of the protesters are not violent, guys. Um, we have to remember that, you know, the media uh, shows certain things and uh, what they want you to see, what gives a more compelling story, what's a more entertaining, quote unquote. So that ends my rant. Um, but it does not end the conversation. So I would urge everyone to go do something and uh, forgive me or don't um, if this was, uh, you know, you didn't want to hear any of this. But it is important and it needs to be heard. Uh, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> with that, guys, I want to thank you uh, for listening to today's episode of the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. As always, guys, uh, we really do appreciate you. 
Um, leave a comment below. Um, you know, what did you like? What did you not like? Um, of, of course, keep it constructive and respectful. Of course, you know, we want to have a, a respectful community and, you know, just let us know anything because it helps us get better. Of course, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, and be sure to be here next week, guys. With that, sorry, just a bit frazzling, um, you know, with everything that's going on. But with that, guys, I hope you have a good night. I hope you're staying safe. And, and amongst, you know, amidst all this madness, don't forget, guys, this social distance. Um, you know, coronavirus is still a thing. I know it's been sort of put on the back burner. Um, it's not been the focus of media attention, but it is still very much real, very much uh, out there. Um, and you should definitely still be taking precautions. So stay safe, guys. Stay healthy. I hope you still have toilet paper. Uh, and have a good night. We'll see you next time. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program